You know one brand that's made like a gun, right? Today we're talking about another brand, a new entrant into India that used to make like guns. Welcome to Powerdrift. If you haven't subscribed to us now, hit the bell notification so that you don't miss out on India's best automotive content. Where were we? Ah yes, guns. That's right, Swedish brand Husqvarna started out making muskets over 300 years ago and in fact the logo's crown today is a stylized gun sight. Back in 1903, when Harley made their first motorcycle, so did Husqvarna clear across the Atlantic in Sweden. But since then, Husqvarna has been part of the Kajiva group, yes, that Kajiva group, the BMW group, and that's when the Nuda happened, and in 2013, KTM CEO Stefan Piero started the process that led it to become part of the KTM family as we know it today. The intention was to make street bikes again, simple, accessible motorcycles. The resurrection of the H brand started in 2013, but the first 401s came a year later. They were based on the KTM 390 Duke. But what we get to buy first are the 250s, and those are based on the most well rounded charmer in the KTM lineup, the 250. The powertrain, then the majority of the chassis is exactly identical, so this story has to focus on the big difference, and that would be design. Wow, there's a Swedish touch right there. The Vitpilin White Arrow is the new Cafe Racer. It takes the ergonomics and functional directness of the Cafe Racer format, but it molds it into a slick flowing shape. The lack of bodywork, the truncated rear, the high quality details like the LED headlight or the indicators or the round meters, there's a lot of intricate details that you will love, in fact on both the motorcycles. So despite being a cafe racer, the wit is so thoroughly modern that you never quite realize that you've been seeing it for six straight years now. And now that we are seeing it in the flesh, you do realize that there is a difference between the finish levels at the top of the motorcycle and the bottom of the motorcycle. The top looks super slick, but at the bottom, the less bodywork there is, the more wiring you see, and that's a little bit off-putting in the light outside. It's good in the studio though. But I have to say, as motorcycles, these are amazing looking things. This is design. Hai? Yes, exactly. Sorry, couldn't resist. But since we're talking about design, we should go to the studio, right? That's it. Perfect. The Spark Pillin on the other hand, the Black Arrow is more like a street scrambler. It has similar lines, all of that LED goodness, but it has a taller handlebar and chunkier tread on the tyres that suggest a more off-road capable motorcycle. But the spec and the price are exactly the same and the off-road promise is more a design thing than function. Also exactly the same is the 30 PS BSX engine from the Duke 250, all its glory. And it sits in the front half of the Duke 250's frame with no changes at all. What is new is the subframe, it's shorter than before and that's what creates this dramatic unique look, which is sort of halfway between a custom and a cool retro motorcycle. That does mean that the number plate and all that is now mounted on the swing arm and in fact the rear monoshock on both of these has 4mm less travel to accommodate that number plate. If you think about it, the three motorcycles, the Duke 250, the Svartpilin and the Vitpilin, they're sort of like ABBA, Roxette and Ace of Base. They're from the same place, but the music they make will appeal to different people. You will be surprised at how little the difference is. The Svartpilin has a braced normal handlebar and you sit upright while the Vitpilin has clip-ons. The riding positions are similar to the Duke 250 and the RC250 respectively. The 5 or 8 spoke rims are different and they are, surprise, lighter and more impact resistant than the KTM equivalents. In fact, the Vitpilin's wheels are 900 grams less and that is significant. The tyres on those rims aren't the same either between the two pillins. The Swart gets the block tread MRF and the Wit gets normal tyres, both in the same size. Now the 9.5 litre fuel tanks and they're small but these are supposed to be urban motorcycles so that fuel tank, the subframe and the wheels account for most of the 4 kilo weight difference. These are lighter than the Duke 250. But when you start riding them, you'll immediately notice that the suspension is far more stiffly sprung. On good roads, it feels stiff. Over the bumps, you're going to feel those bumps. It's never harsh, but the bumps never feel very far away from you either. But the handling, now that is nice because these are sharp, accurate and responsive motorcycles and up a mountain road, Either of the pillins will put a big smile on your face. I guess it's hard to argue with those jeans. 
The brakes, they are the same as the 250s and therefore we know that these are nice brakes. It's got a nice friendly initial bite and lots of power after that, lots of feedback and obviously ABS is standard. So the big difference between the two will probably come from how you sit on the motorcycle, the handlebars and the footpeg position. And for that, my recommendation is do what you do at H&M anyway. Go take a test ride, see what fits you better and purchase that motorcycle if you're having trouble deciding. The difference to the Husky's Pirate Bay, the Duke 250 is a lot more pronounced. The seat height is higher on the Huskies by almost 2 cm and unfortunately the design is narrow at the knee recesses but wider between the thighs so shorter riders will tiptoe a little bit. But the Duke also feels more damped and more pliant than the Huskies and engine wise too. Although the powertrain is the same, the Husqvarna show you more vibration in the handlebar. It's not enough for me to complain about it but the refinement on the Duke is definitely better. And that is interesting as a choice because the Europeans, who see powerful dirt bikes as their primary source of single cylinder entertainment, are far more tolerant of vibration, minor or otherwise, than Indian customers. Out of the Swedish snowscape and back to the Indian monsoon. And the question is, given that they're the same price, which one do you pick? And I think it's literally down to which one makes you feel better. Personally, I think I prefer the new cafe racer, the Wittpelin. I think the lack of the tank rack and the clip-ons together make for a much sharper look. I also think that the darker colours on the Spark Pillin, they rob the design a little bit of its eye-catching beauty. KTM India is pricing the Husqvarna's below the equivalent KTM Duke. In the 250's case, these are Rs 1.85 lakhs ex showroom Delhi. For that money, you get motorcycles that aren't as versatile as the Duke, mostly down to the lack of space at the back and the small fuel tank, but they are far more stylish and distinctive. I am now convinced that Husqvarna should have brought the 390's, I mean the 401's first to India. You see, the Duke 250 it evokes less emotion than the ferocious 390. The Husqvarna's are exuberant designs, but they're calm, subtle motorcycles. These are likeable, easy on the eye, and they're cheaper than the KTM. But they're more Alfred Nobel than dynamite. It's like the things at the big blue Swedish store. But this design takes away some of the functionality. In Europe, where this is a learner class motorcycle, that would be okay. But in India, I think there is an issue because we generally have just one motorcycle and we hold on to it for a really long time. That said, I do like the direction that KTM India is headed in here. It's very Minecraft-like in the way that the brands and the platforms are coming together. So much choice, so much design, even if some of it is Austro-Swedish. Come to think of it, it's like being in an IKEA store, but it gets better. You don't have to assemble that at home. Ace of Bass, Roxette and Abba, they're all at a concert and they're all singing at the same time and nobody can make out what's going on. Dude, this thing continues to spin. <laughs> <laughs> 